Hello, welcome to Coding with Amadeus, episode number 4. Today we'll talk about test-driven development and we'll write our first tests. In brief, TDD splits the code development into two stages. The first one, you write tests based on the project requirements. And then, you write the program's code. The tests indicate whether the program's code is correct or not. They not only ensure that the software meets the specification, but they give you, as a developer, convenience and peace of mind. And I think that this is the key to embracing TDD. Remember that the tests are there to help you in the long run. Let's take a look at a simple unit test. This test invokes some fragment of your code, checking if this code behaves as expected. If it does, the test method just ends. The test will pass. If the code didn't behave as expected, just throw an exception from the test method, which will fail the test. Let's take a look at this snippet of code. We actually don't need to throw an exception directly. We use assertion that throws an exception if the condition fails. If the condition doesn't fail, we'll reach the end of the method and the test will pass. Unit test is not just about a single method. A unit test checks if a unit of code works as expected, and it's up to you to define the unit. In our case, we'll test interactions between the model and the view model. Suppose we have a clock which says that the time is 2015, 10, 30, 9, 12, 13. We test if a clock view model hooked up to this model will say that it's 9, 12. In another test, we'll update the time at the model and test if the notify property changed event correctly updated the view model. What does it mean that the view model shows correct time? In our current implementation, clock view model shows the current time of the system, which changes every second. That's where mocking comes. We can mock a clock model and make it return a very specific time whenever any piece of code accesses the current time property. For example, we can make this clock model always return at this 2015, 10, 30, 9, 12, 13. Unfortunately, as of October 2015, there are no mocking frameworks that work with the universal Windows apps, or .NET Core for that matter. Which means that in this video series, we won't be able to look at mock queue or nsubstitute. But instead, we'll make a basic mock ourselves. We'll create a class mockClockModel, which extends the ClockModel class, and it allows us to override the current time property, essentially creating a mock for the purpose of our tests. Let's write our first tests. We'll start by adding a test project. Right click on the solution, hit add, new project, and then under C-sharp Windows Universal, hit unit test app. We'll give it a name, amadeusw.mirror.joy.tests. And for the location, we'll follow the guidelines from the first episode and we'll call this directory tests. We'll rename the file to clock test. Actually, clock tests. We'll rename the class. Let's just see what we can do. Let's get an instance of a clock model. varcm equals new clock model. Clock model in I'm going to use W, mirror GUI dot clock. We see squiggly lines. Clock model is inaccessible due to its protection level. This class is internal by default. It's not public. There's a way to expose internal types to other projects within the solution. We go to properties of the project whose internals we want to expose to, go to assembly info and we'll add a line assembly internals visible to and we provide the name of an assembly to whom we want to show the internals. In our case that will be www.mirror.gui.tests 
And with this saved, we're able to access the clock model. All right. Var test equals cm dot current time. Let's see what happens. We can set a breakpoint here. Hit Control Shift B for Visual Studio to restore the packages and find the test. We can go to the Text Explorer pane. As we build a solution, the tests are being discovered, and here we see test method. Let's debug it. The breakpoint will stop the execution at this line. I'm really fed up with development for Windows 10, actually. The debugging took like a minute to start up, then it didn't work at all. I cannot use mocks. I really wanted to show you mocks. Maybe it's too early to judge. I really hope that everything works out in the future. So for now, I figured out how to fix this bug. I don't really understand why it works that way. So back in app.xaml for the original project, we added the clock view model as a resource. And I went to the unit test app.xaml and I added exactly the same thing. I added this instance as a resources application. Also, I need to add a XML namespace. And now debugging seems to work. Let's set a breakpoint and debug it. We can see that the unit test app appeared on the other screen and shortly our breakpoint should hit. Here it is. And, oh, because we didn't initialize. Changes are not enabled. Oh no. All right, so debugging is really hard for Windows 10 apps, but we won't be debugging this way. I have this extension called Alive. It's right here, there's this play icon. And when you hit it, Alive executes the code that we have right here. Uh, it shows what every line of code does. So here we create a, a clock model and here we are accessing current time. And Alive shows you what is the time. And first thing we see, the time is completely wrong. And that's because we forgot to initialize the view clock model. So we'll say cm.update. And the time works right now. So let's take a look at how we are hooking up the model to the view model in the app.xaml.cs. We create the model, we update it. So we create the model, we update it, and then we are taking the clock view model from the resources and we initialize it passing the clock model. Here we don't need to get the clock view model from the resources, we can just create an instance. So var clock view model equals new clock view model cvm dot initialize with the clock model and now we can say var cvm time equals cvm dot current time so we'll see what is the time at the clock view model the model reports 7:50:09 p.m. And the clock view model shows 750, just the way we wanted to display it. We can see the test not only tell you whether the specification is met or not met, but tests are a very convenient way to get into the code without having to debug or run the virtual machine. The specification of my smart mirror say that the, that the clock will show the time in our colon minute format. So let's say assert are equal. The parameters are expected actual. So what do we want to see? We would like to see 750 is the time and actual CVM time. So in this test, we want to check if CVM time is equal to 750. It's 7.53 and we can see an, an error message here that the assert r equal failed. This is the exception that was thrown. If we change it to 3, everything works. 
we can run this test with Visual Studio. It will take a little bit longer. And we see that it passed. But when we run this test again, right now at 7.54, the test will fail again. We need to be deterministic here. That's where mocks come in place. We will create a mock of the clock model, which will return the exact current time right here that we specify. So we can tell the clock model to return 7.53, 18 seconds. And then every single time we run it, we'll get 7.53, 18 seconds. And then we can actually assert if the clock view model correctly displays that time. So let's get started. We'll stop alive. And right here in our test project, I'll add a new class. So I hit uh, Shift Alt C. And we'll call this class mock clock model. It's a tongue twister almost. And the mock clock model extends the clock model. Control dot will bring the usings. And what the clock model does, the clock model has current time and the current time is set with the update method. So we could override the update method to specify the current time of our choosing. In the mock clock model, we'll then write public override void update. So now whenever we're using the mock clock model and call the update method, instead of calling the clock models update, which sets current time to date time now, we will set current time to mock date time. And mock date time will be a property of the mock clock model, which we can get and set from within the test assembly. That's what the internal keyword means. Uh, so let's use it. Instead of var cm equals new clock model, we'll call it var cm equals new mock clock model. And we'll say cm dot mock date time equals date time dot parse. And I already looked up the format for parse before on the internet and we'll write 2015 10 30 7 actually 1953 13 let's uh, run this test and see what happens so the current time provided by the clock model the cm time right here it's 7:53:13 exactly what we wanted and the clock view model translates it to 7:53 which is fantastic. Right now in this test, we tested that the clock view model correctly displays time after 10. So let's rename this method. Clock view model correctly displays time. PM time. It currently displays the time in the afternoon because instead of 19, we're seeing seven. So this is our first test. Let's copy it and write another test. Uh, this one concerned the time in the afternoon. Let's do time in the morning. Let's make it 4 a.m. We want the view model not to display 0453. We only want to see 453. But for the sake of completeness, let's see what happens here. We can hit Control Shift B for Visual Studio to learn about all the tests in the solution. We can hit Run All. And this one failed. We can see it failed because it expected 0453 and got 453. And we can do the same thing with Alive. We'll just refresh the list of test cases to learn about the new test that we have here. And Alive shows the same issue that expected 453 with a zero and we got 453. 
but this test case was purposefully wrong. It should be 453, and now it passes. Now that we know the view model displays the time correctly, let's see what happens when the model updates. We want the view model to update automatically. So we'll take this method and we'll call it clock view model correctly updates time. So we'll start with a clock model with specific time. We will initialize the clock view model and then we'll update the time on the clock model side. So the new time will be 5.54. We'll update the model and now we want the clock view model time to be also 5.54. So we'll assert that the time should be 5.54 as CVM time 2. We'll quickly refresh. And we see that our test passes. We can actually assert that the time initially is 4.53. And later, we update the clock model only. So we simulate the timer right here in timer controller updating our model every single second. So the model updates and without us doing anything, the clock view model updated correctly. This is a pretty good test that shows that the clock view model indeed is updated. We can actually take a look at the clock view model and find the method model property changed and see that this method is being run by the mock clock model saying that current time just changed and then we invoke the method update time and in update time we are taking the time first 4.53 October 30th and then it's 5.54 just as we planned. This was a quick intro to test-driven development in Windows 10. It is painful. We had some problems with mysterious exceptions happening and we cannot use mocks. However, we learned how to mock ourselves. Let's recap. Our mock is a class which extends from the class that we want to mock. Specifically, we want to mock the behavior of the update method Originally, this method assigns the current machine time to the property current time, which is then read by the rest of the application. In our mock clock model, we overridden the method update so that the current time is mocked day time, and mock day time is whatever we tell it to be. In the next episode, we'll implement the weather service for our smart mirror. See you soon.